Welcome back. The South Dakota football team suffered loss number two of the season at the hands of Northern Iowa on Saturday. And though there were some costly mistakes in that game, the Yotes still remain in control of their own destiny in terms of winning a conference title. For more on that and the week ahead, here's Jay Elson with Bob Nielsen in Vermilion. All right, thank you, Kelly. Well, Bob, there are losses and there are the ones that get away from you. And it certainly felt like Saturday was one of the latter. Yeah, unfortunately, one of those games you'd like to have back. Um, but uh, as I talked to our team, uh, we you don't get that opportunity in football. It's it's not a home and away deal. It's uh, one shot, and we certainly did enough things Saturday to cost us the football game. Well, offensively, you move the football effectively throughout the entire first half. In fact, you made four trips inside the red zone. You scored on all of them, but just one touchdown to show for it. So. What were some of the things that were in play there that, that were causing the struggles at the end of those drives? Well, you and I is a really good defensive football team, and when the field gets compressed, it gets a little bit harder to, to move the ball against them. And, you know, we had a couple of uh, – the disappointing thing is I, I think in two of those three drives that we settled for field goals, we actually had uh, third and short. And uh, uh, those are situations where we need to convert at a higher rate than what we did on Saturday. Uh, your second touchdown of the day um, came on your opening drive of the second half. After that, though, it, it really got to be some tough sledding. You and I was making things tough on you. The good news was your defense was making things just about as tough on them. They didn't give uh, you and I a whole lot all day outside of that one big play in the second quarter. So at least from that standpoint, pleased with the effort? Yeah, I was pleased with the effort on both sides of the football. I thought our defense played really well all day. Uh, gave up uh, just two big plays um, and uh, were really, really tough against the run, which is what Northern Iowa wanted to do. And, uh, you know, with the we had that opening drive in the third quarter and then, uh, you know, stalled out on a couple of drives, uh, you know, dropped a ball on third down that could have kept us going and on one of them. And, and then obviously had the early drive in the fourth quarter, which would have given us a chance to, to get uh, a two-score lead. Uh, 283 total yards allowed uh, to you and I on the day. Just 55 rushing. He had nine tackles for loss, four sacks. Those are numbers most weeks you're going to take as a head coach, aren't you? Yeah, uh, great numbers. Um, and, uh, you know, when you stop a running football team from running the football, which is what we did, uh, put them into off-schedule situations, we were able to get after the quarterback and, and uh, um, put pressure on him throughout the course of the day. Uh, the fourth quarter is when things got really crazy. and You alluded to it a little earlier. You had a chance to make it a two-score game with about nine minutes to go. But Strevler gets his pass picked off in the end zone. Can you kind of just walk us through what happened on that play? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a play-action pass where uh, it was supposed to look like quarterback run, and, and we were to slip a receiver uh, into the back of the end zone. And, um, you know, Chris probably held on to the ball a little bit too long um, and uh, didn't uh, see the, the corner that uh, came off uh, and sloughed back into the play. You know, one of those that I know he'd like to have back. Um, it's either, uh, you know, should be a, a wide open or out of the end zone type throw. And, and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, you know, he's a guy that uh, has made a lot of plays for us and was, was trying to make a play there. Uh, defense did come through for you there. They got a stop, so got the ball back. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't do much after that because UNI gets its first lead of the day following that Kai Henry fumble on that ensuing possession. Uh, and then, of course, the pick six. So what's going through your mind as you're watching all that unfold in such a short time frame? Yeah, you know, it's, that's obviously really disappointing. Um, we've, we've really taken great pride in ball security. And then, you know, to fumble a ball there where, you know, with, we're within a first down or two of being able to kill the clock and, and win the football game. Um, and then when we are uh, got our back against the wall after you and I score and taking the lead, uh, again, you know, having to f try to force the ball downfield, uh, um, you know, the, the interception return for a touchdown really put us in a two score uh, uh, two scores down, which was going to make it very difficult for us. Well, the news wasn't all bad on Saturday. From an individual standpoint, you had a couple of guys who had some big days for you. Offensively, Josh Hale, your tight end, six catches, 151 yards and a touchdown. What a year he's having. Had eight career catches coming into this season. He's got 16 for over 300 yards and, a, and three touchdowns now. Yeah, you know, what he's done in, uh, you know, from last year to this year is he's uh, really uh, worked physically to, to make himself a better receiver. Uh, he's actually down in weight a little bit. Uh, 
uh, runs runs better, uh, and and you see his athleticism, and you saw his athleticism on on Saturday with his ability to to run after the catch. Defensively, one guy that's really come on, your true freshman defensive tackle, Nathan Schultz. He had a couple of sacks for you on Saturday. Has four of them now on the year. All of them in the last four games. This kid's really turning a corner. It seems like. Well, it's, yeah, I don't know if you can call him freshman anymore <laughs> after you've played uh, uh, nine games in, in this league and, and uh, a guy that's got a great future, a guy that's, I think, got a chance to be one of the premier players in the league. All right, well, thanks for your insight. Thanks for your time, as always, Bob. Coyotes looking to shake this one off in a hurry because they do have another big one coming up this Saturday at North Dakota State. We'll have more on the Battle with the Bison coming up later this week on Big Coast Sports Tonight. Kelly, back to you. All right, thanks so much, Jay. Well, despite the loss, the Coyotes still remain ranked in the top 10 in both the stats, FCS Top 25 and the FCS Coaches Poll, ranking in number 10 at both of those. Well, like Jay said, the Coyotes can't dwell on this one too long because like every Saturday in Valley Play, there's a huge game coming up. And with that, we want to hear from you, the viewers. We want you to tweet us your favorite USD, NDSU, border battle rivalry moments or memories from the last five years. That's our list topic for this week. We'll compile them all together, reveal the list tomorrow on our Wednesday show and kind of discuss it as well. So looking forward to hearing from you guys. Head on over to Twitter. Well, coming up after the break, we send it to Grand Forks where Alex Heinert sits in with UND head football coach Bubba Schweiger to talk about their loss to Southern Utah over the weekend. Stay right here.